put up the buckskin around the bracelet and sewing it on. I don't use glue, I don't use nothing but my handy dandy string. So let's begin. Tell you a bracelet comes in various sizes. This is an inch and a quarter to get your wrap size on that. You inch and a quarter plus inch and a quarter is half inch. And that's where you get your measured, but then you add a quarter of an inch because it has to wrap around the sides too. So it's like an eighth and eighth. Add together, it's a quarter. And you end up marking it at three quarters of an inch. Using the back side because this is the side I'm going to have exposed. So I'll mark on the back side and cut everything from that. Mark it the best you can. Get your cutters, your scissors, exact knife, knife, whatever you used to. Cut your buckskin. So once you have it, well, underneath and wrapped around, then it should just touch or have a little space for it. So when you sew it together, it'll pull. When you sew it together, it'll pull it tight and it'll close the seam. And I know this is a uh, six inches around, so three inches from here to here will give you center. If you guys want to know where the center is, or you can just go start from one side beading, make whichever design you want on it. But a lot of people like symmetry and it's just a good fun fact to know. So I'll be back. Okay, let's sew this together. So I got my glover. It's a small, small glover. 12 glovers. That's what I'm using. Needle, thread, wax. I got beads on my wax. As always, or if you can, if you want, that's all. Preference of the beater. Well, it's the preference of the beater if you want to use wax. And sometimes people ask me what's the purpose of wax, but help lubricate the string because you're pulling through buckskin and you're pulling through all your pieces you don't want to fray off and get caught on something okay so I'm doing this leave a little bit for on the edge this has more of a square edge so it can fold over nice and just square it up sideways to that Square it up. Unlike this one, it has a more of a curved round edge, so you gotta do a little trickery to get it to look nice. But this is more square, so it shouldn't really be a problem when doing the ends. But a little, little space, half inch, quarter inch, whatever you're comfortable with. And try to keep it in the center the best you can. It tends to want to wander. Push your needle through. But I make this look easy because I do this a lot. Well, not a lot. But as you just start the back side, back side. Just because I'm holding it like this, it makes it easy for me. 
Well, you don't have to start right at the edge. I'm pushing this up closer to the end. So whatever distance you want here is the distance you want to have the bottom or wherever you want. You can start even in the middle and go here and come back. But just like that, I do. I think he's wearing a little jacket. And just come up and over, up and over. Juicy. Because if you're trying to beat it over and over, it's going to want to make the leather overlap one another. Trying to do that. And I want to try to have it like a butt edge. So if I go through the top and come up, and through the top and come up, it'll allow it to be more of a butt edge. And if you know what I mean. Because I don't want to have a, I don't want it to be an overlapping edge. So, I mean, I'll do it once because it is a lot easier to push down and trying to push, pull up, or pull needle, push the needle into the leather, than to bring it up. So. What you want to do is just keep going back and forth, like so. Just keep this on the inside. Oh, you don't have to be super close because once you put your beads on, it'll help pull the leather tiger. I mean, the only reason why this is really close and together is that I really stretch this. Because this is, as you can see, it sounds like it's solid. Or you can see it sounds super solid. With this, I don't have to make it super solid. Okay, so that's how it looks. Make it smash. Roll it down, roll it around. Kind of compress the leather. So it flattens out, it gives you more of a flatter surface and it closes up the seam a little more. find that later but so it looks so now I just want to cut off the extra because this stretches no pull and pull it around here like so but that's kind of a lot so I'll take a little more off boom just like that through it, bring it up, pull, and now I'll just go tight on that, back through here, just to get it kind of locked into place. Scissors. Oh, start trimming these off because they are going to be in my way once I start trying to sew all this together. So, there I kind of made the shape of where I want. 
and I can cut to the corner on one side. Go here, kind of trim this extra off, like so. Put those things back tight. This is what pull here, so pull here. And then I need to go through and trim this to the corner of that and this to the corner of that. Boy, it kind of makes a natural pocket. Okay, a little extra here. One side to the other side. Way. And this may not, may not be the right way, but this is the way I do it. to go too much from that side but from here to pierce this side down somewhere or put other guys and then from here I just normally go to the corner of my table and just push it down and massage everything so it kind of gets flat So, tell from this side, it gets it there, but then when you're beating, you're beating from here, roughly, to around here. So most of all this will be covered up. And that's how I do the, how I sew them. So that's how I sew buckskin on too. A blank. So my next video will be how you sew your beads onto a blank without any fabric stabilizer, just straight to this.